to concept one, which is cell theory and organelles. This is the first concept in our cells unit. So first, what is the cell theory? This is basically three principles that kind of set the foundation for what we know to be true about cells. So first, it is that all living things are made of cells. So every living thing is made of cells. Two, because of this, we say that cells are the most basic unit of life. There is nothing smaller than a cell that is considered alive, and cells um, are what work together to make up all living things. And then three, all cells come from other cells. So to make more cells, we get those from previously existing cells. We're going to look at each of these three over the next few concepts. So first, still talking about um, being made of cells, although all living things are made of cells, organisms can be unicellular or multicellular. Um, unicellular means an organism is literally made of one cell. So there's lots of different microorganisms that are simply bacteria that are made of one cell. Whereas other organisms are multicellular, like this dog. They, multicellular organisms are composed of many cells. And for humans, we're made of trillions of cells. So those cells are organized into tissues, and tissues are organized into organs, and organs are organized into organ systems. And you, an organism, are made of a bunch of organ systems. So no matter how simple or complex you may be, we're all made of cells. Now, in terms of cells being the most basic unit of life, we also need to know that there are two types of cells. There are prokaryotic cells, like we see on the left, and eukaryotic cells like we see on the right. And we're going to talk through the differences and similarities in those. So prokaryotic cells have no nucleus. And a nucleus is something that holds and protects DNA or genetic material. And we'll talk more about that in a few slides. Eukaryotic cells do have a nucleus. They do have this. Prokaryotic cells do not have membrane-bound organelles, which we'll be talking more about in a little but eukaryotic cells do. Prokaryotic cells tend to divide by binary fission. Eukaryotic cells can divide by mitosis, which is a process we'll be talking about in concept three. Prokaryotic cells are all unicellular organisms, meaning they're made of one single prokaryotic cell, whereas eukaryotic organisms can be unicellular. Protists are unicellular eukaryotic organisms but mainly they're multicellular. So most organisms that are made of eukaryotic cells have millions to trillions and billions of them. Prokaryotic cells do have cell walls and they're made of something called peptidoglycan, which you don't need to worry about. Eukaryotic cells can have cell walls. Um, fungus and plants um, do. They're made of chitin and cellulose, but animal cells do not. Um, and they are eukaryotic. So not all eukaryotes have cell walls. And then prokaryotic cells, an example is bacteria. Eukaryotic cells, that's our animals, us, plants, fungus, um, or fungi for plural, and then protists also. Now, there, all cells, though, have four things in common. So whether you're prokaryotic bacteria or a eukaryotic animal, you have these four things in your cells. They all have a cell membrane, which is kind of the skin. It's this internal layer here. It's this external la layer in this picture. They all have cytoplasm, which is this fluid in the cell. They all have ribosomes, which are these little dots in here th that make proteins. And they all have genetic material um, in the form of DNA or RNA, which we'll learn more about in the future. So let's talk about these organelles. We said that eukaryotic cells have them, prokaryotic cells don't. So what are these? So all cells, even though they have these four structures, eukaryotic cells also have these additional organelles. And organelles are specialized structures within the cell that work together to help the cell function. Think of them as like mini organs. So you have organs like your heart and your lungs and your stomach and your body that work together to help you as an organism function. Well, organelles are like mini organs in the cell that work together to have this cell function. And it's really important that they all work together for one purpose, and that purpose is to make Proteins, remember from macromolecules, proteins matter. They are so important. They run your body. So you're going to see as we go through each of these, they all kind of have a purpose 
that allows them to work together for this common function. So this is an animal cell. Animal cell has slightly different organelles from a plant cell like you can see here. You may notice though there are some similarities. So we're going to go through each of the organelles and I'll make sure to tell you if it's only in animal cells or only in plants. If I don't tell you that means that you can find it in both of them. So first, the cell membrane or the plasma membrane. Its structure is that it surrounds the outside of all cells. It's made of two layers, and we call this a phospholipid bilayer. We mentioned this when we learned about macromolecules in Unit 1. Its job is to control what goes in and out of the cell. So it's kind of protective in that way. So we've got an animal cell here on the left, and there's an arrow showing it's on the outside. And this plant cell, it's actually the second layer in because plant cells have a cell wall. And then in this bacteria cell over here, it's the innermost layer also. So for each organelle, I'm going to show you where it exists in the animal cell, the plant cell, and the bacteria cell. So you've got two eukaryotic examples and a prokaryotic to see where it is. Now a little bit more about that phospholipid bilayer. Here's what it looks like close up. It's pretty complex. But basically it's two layers of fats, or two layers of lipids, which you can see them right there. These fats are phospholipids specifically. They have this phosphate and glycerol head and these fatty acid tails. There are proteins embedded throughout. That's what you can kind of see some of them labeled here. And we call this fluid mosaic model because it's composed of many parts making it mosaic. But the parts kind of fluid. They kind of move around freely. And so that's where it gets this statement that it's a fluid mosaic model. And that's all I really need you to know about the fossil of a bilayer. But it's critical for how the cell functions. And we will talk about it a little bit more in concept two. All right, another organelle is the cytoskeleton. Its structure is made of these thread-like fibers. Um, it's made of proteins. And it's usually not pictured in a cell diagram. So if you go back and you look at some of those pictures, you're not going to see it. They don't normally show it because it would make it look the diagram look really complicated. But basically its job is it's just it looks invisible in the pictures, but it's to give the cell some shape and some structure. It can also be used to move organelles around. And specifically in animal cells, it provides structural support because animal cells don't have that rigid cell wall like plant cells and bacteria cells do. All right, cytoplasm. It is a jelly-like substance. That's kind of the consistency of it. It's mainly made up of water. And its job is just kind of hold everything in place. It's just kind of this empty space you can see in all of the cells. All the different types of cells have this cytoplasm. The nucleus. Now, this is one of the most important organelles in a eukaryotic cell. Its structure is it contains your genetic material. You can see there's four chromosomes in this nucleus, four pieces of DNA. It's surrounded by this nuclear envelope or membrane, and it has pores in it. And the pores allow things in and out of the nucleus. So think about there's pores in your face that allow oils and different things to go in and out. Um, same with the nucleus. Its job is basically just to protect your DNA. And remember, your DNA, it controls all of the activities of the cell. It runs the cell. It's really important. We can see the nucleus here in the animal cell here in the plant cell, and it is not in the, in the prokaryotic cell, excuse me. You can see in the prokaryotic cell, this red stuff right here, that's just the DNA just kind of floating around in the middle of the cell. It's not protected like it is in a eukaryotic cell by the nucleus. Now you may be wondering, what's this red thing in the middle? Well, that's called the nucleolus, so two little letters added there, the nucleolus, that's what we're talking about. It is inside of the nucleus, and its job is it makes something called rRNA, which stands for ribosomal RNA. And we'll talk about this later when we learn about genetics, but rRNA is what makes up the ribosomes, which is another organelle. So that's what it does, and we can see it here in those nucleus, and again, there's no nucleus in a prokaryotic cell, so there's no nucleolus. All right, let's talk about these ribosomes. They look like these little dots here. They are made of proteins and rRNA. They're located on the rough ER and floating in the cytoplasm. So if you look at this picture, they're the, these bumps right along here, and then they're also these bumps that are floating in the cytoplasm. Same with here. It's all, these rough bumps, and then they're floating in the cytoplasm. In a um, prokaryotic cell, they're just floating in the cytoplasm. And their job is to make proteins. So yes, they're made of proteins, but they also make proteins, and that's super important. 
Again, we can see them floating. We can see them stuck on the rough ER or again floating. So let's talk about that rough ER. That's the endoplasmic reticulum and it's usually hugging the nucleus. So that's why we have the nucleus in this picture just so you can kind of see it. There it is. It has ribosomes on the surface. That's what makes it rough. It hugs the nucleus and its job is to make proteins because it has ribosomes on it. And again, there it is and there it is and it's not in the prokaryotic cell. Smooth ER, the smooth endoplasmic reticulum is right here. It's a little bit closer. It, it does not have ribosomes on it, which is why we say it's smooth. It's attached to the rough ER and close to the nucleus. And its job is to make lipids or it makes membranes. So it helps make you know, the cell membrane and other things like that, make some fats. We see it here and here and not in the prokaryotic cell. All right, the Golgi. It's a folded membrane, and its job is to get vesicles of protein from the ER. That's what it does. Vesicles are like mini carts, and what they do is they transport proteins around the cell where they need to go. So the gold tube, we kind of see it's like a packaging center. It processes the proteins, and it sorts them, and it ships them in vesicles where they need to go. So it kind of looks like rough ER in the folded membrane, but you'll see in these pictures it's actually detached from the nucleus. It's not attached to the nucleus. And again, it's not in the prokaryotic cell. All right, lysosomes. Now these are a little bit indistinguishable in a picture. So most likely I would not have you label these in a picture um, like I would some of the more defining um, organelles, like the Golgi that's pretty easy to see. But a lysosome contains enzymes because its job is to break down dead stuff. Food, bacteria, old parts of the cell, harmful substances. And it can also do something called programmed cell death, or apoptosis. And we'll talk about that more in concept three. So we can kind of just see them floating around in the animal cell. They are not in the plant cell, and they are not in a prokaryotic cell. So they are animal cells only. This is the first organelle we're talking about that is only in animal cells. So make sure you make note of that. Only in animal cells. All right, vacuoles. They can look like this, or they can look like this. So they can be small and numerous in animal cells, like so, or they're just one large central one in plant cells. But its purpose is to store stuff, to store water, nutrients, waste, all sorts of things. So again, in animal cells, we usually see a bunch of smaller ones. In plant cells, it's just a giant one. It looks like a swimming pool. And again, not in prokaryotic cells. All right, centrioles or centrosomes, you may see the words interchangeably in different sources, um, but they can be pictured as this or as this. So try not to make it confusing, but I know it kind of is. Um, they're made of microtubules, and their job is they show up during cell division, and they help the cell divide by pulling chromosomes apart. So we'll talk about them a lot more in concept three. But you can see them here in the animal cell, not in plant cells and not in prokaryotics. This is another organelle that you're just going to find in animal cells. All right, cilia and flagella. Cilia are shorter and more numerous. They're like tiny ores. They look like tiny hairs surrounding the cell. Flagella are longer and fewer. You'll usually see like one to three. They're more like tails. And their job is movement. Cilia specifically moves fluid across the cell surface. You have cilia that go down the back of your throat cells that help move fluids down your cell, or excuse me, down your throat. Whereas flagella are actually designed to move the entire cell. They're kind of like whips. You'll see them on sperm cells to help the sperm get to the egg. They're not in plant cells, but they are in animal cells, not in the one pictured here, but they are in animal cells, and we can also see them in bacteria cells. Here's an example of flagella on this bacteria cell. So they're animal and bacteria cells only. All right, mitochondria. They have two parts, an inner membrane, which is kind of the squiggly part, and then a matrix, which is like the fluid part of the cytoplasm of the mitochondria. Its job is where cellular respiration happens, and this is a process in your body that breaks down food to release energy in the form of ATP, and we'll spend a whole concept on this later in Unit 3. It's known as the powerhouse of the cell, and you'll see there will be multiple ones in a cell. There's all, they're in plant cells too. They are not in bacteria cells. So mitochondria is super important for eukaryotic cells. Chloroplasts. 
All right, the chloroplast. It has two parts also. Grana, which are these stacks you'll see, and then stroma, which is like the fluid part. Its job is where photosynthesis happens. It converts energy from the sun into energy in sugars. Not in animal cells, but there are multiple in plant cells. And again, no bacteria cells also. So this is plant cells only. All right, cell wall. Structure it can be made of a bunch of different things. In plants, it's going to be made of cellulose. In fungus or fungi, it's going to be made of chitin. And in bacteria, it's going to be made of peptidoglycan. But its job is to provide structure and maintain shape and provide some protection. Not in animal cells, but it is the outer layer in plant cells and bacteria cells. All right, central vacuole. We mentioned vacuoles earlier, but I do just want to highlight the central vacuole specifically. Again, it's one massive central structure. It's a storage center. It's not in animal cells. It's only in plant cells and not bacteria cells. So this is one of those plant cell only structures. All right, I want you to take a minute and I want you to practice labeling this cell. Pause this and label. And then I want you to do the same thing with this plant cell. I want you to try to label and then go back and see how you did based on what you labeled. And then the last thing I want you to do is like kind of a summary for your notes is I want you to compare and contrast prokaryotic cells with eukaryotic cells and animal cells with plant cells. So you can really, really make sure you have these just differentiated. All right, and that's concept one, cell theory and organelles.